Okay, now lo and behold, this is not a complete holistic look at every single guy that the Canadians have at the World Juniors. In fact, I could have made that video, but there are six guys at the tournament and I feel like spending just a minute and a half each on all of their stories, it wouldn't really give us the time to properly digest what it is they're going through and their situations as a whole on their teams, plus the fact that the World Juniors is still going on. We have games coming out later today, so this entire video and the numbers, they might not even be accurate by, let's say, three hours from now. So, for the sake of just keeping things light, what I wanted to do was focus on two of the guys in the Montreal Canadian system that have had more hype than others. Okay, maybe aside from Lane Hudson, but we already made a video about him and Luke Hughes, so he gets a bit of a pass at this point. But what I wanted to do was talk about the Canadians' most recent first round pick in the 2022 NHL entry draft, as well as talk about a guy from 2021 that was seen by many as a potential steal right after his draft eligible year. Let's head over to Team Canada and talk about Josh Waugh, and we'll go over to Team Slovakia and talk about Philip Meshar as well. Starting out with Waugh, because he is the older of the two. I mean, if you've been paying attention to the tournament, you don't really need me to tell you this, but Waugh has been having a pretty good tournament. Sure, is he the Connor Bedard going out there, scoring everything, and getting a point on every single goal that seems to be going in for the Canadians? No. Is he the absolute heart and soul of the team's offense like Bedard is, where Connor is able to just control an entire shift by himself at ease, dictate the play, make the right reads, and just put the puck in the back of the net? No, but Joshua, in a vacuum, has been playing particularly well. So far in the limited sample that they have had, three games played, Wah has two goals and three assists for five points on the tournament. He is tied for third in the entire tournament scoring, behind Logan Stankoven and the aforementioned Connor Bedard. He's actually tied with a whole bunch of people. Teammates Dylan Genther, Shane Wright, and Olin Zellweger all have five points each, as do a whole bunch of other guys throughout the tournament. But for Joshua, he is a guy that's standing out to me in more ways than one, not necessarily because he is the absolute X-factor that Connor is, but because he's just playing the right way. I mean, for Waugh, there wasn't really an expectation that he would become this super dynamic guy, because even though he had a whole bunch of numbers in the QMJHL, as we had said, 119 points in 66 games played last season, absolutely torched the league, even though he was a fifth-round pick the summer prior. Even though he put up these numbers, we always said that the concerns with Waugh were that his foot speed needs a little bit of work, his engagement needs work too, especially when he doesn't have the puck, and everything that he does outside the offensive zone needs to be refined a tad. Sure, he can score his problems away, especially when he's playing against QMJHL competition, but how are these traits going to carry Wah into the next stages of his career? We made a ton of videos just talking about the success, talking about the numbers, and also bringing that up as well. But so far at the World Juniors, he actually has been playing in a way that I feel doesn't really shine a light on a lot of those concerns. And the reason I say it like that is because Wa is making some really good plays. He's drawing opposition to himself, opening up passing lanes, and finding the open man on the side. He did this several times with Connor Bedard. He is able to find the open spaces when he doesn't have the puck, which is how Connor Bedard has found him on a few of the goals that he has scored. And even though Wa hasn't had, like, the wrist shot Austin Matthews style Connor Bedard snipes that the other Canadians have had, Wa is getting goals just by getting goals. He's getting ugly ones, ones that pop out to the side and he's the man in front on the rebound. On the rush goals, where he's just whacking it towards the net, the goalie gets a piece of it, and it slithers behind him to get Canada on the board. For what Josh Waugh was supposed to be, I'm more than satisfied with seeing how he's played so far. And it's not even because, oh, he's over a point per game, that's why you're satisfied. It's, no, you're actually seeing a guy put himself in the right spots, he's making the right reads, and he's really not showcasing any of the worries that we had for him heading into his draft-eligible year and inevitable draft plus one year. It's odd because with these QMJHL guys, you see players like Alexi Lafreniere, for example. He's probably the one in the spotlight the most. By the way, we're going to have to make a few videos talking about Lafreniere and the Habs because there are some articles popping up out there about that sort of topic. But 
Some QMJHL guys, they're able to score a whole bunch of points because the QMJHL does not really punish players who are not too active on their feet, who, when they don't have the puck, are a little bit lackadaisical. If you're in the QMJHL and you've got a hockey mind, you can make some good plays, you've got some puck skills, and you can shoot, then you're probably going to have some success in that league. And Joshua, he had a lot of those. And now, at the World Juniors, where he's not playing against only QMJHL competition, he's still looking pretty good, which is all I could ever ask for, to be honest. And so for Wa, he's been good. You can talk to the comments on your thoughts about how he's performed with the Canadians so far. The Habs, or not the Habs, oh my goodness, the Canadians themselves. I said Canadians and I was like, oh, Canadians, Habs. There's a correlation in my mind because the Canadian team is comprised of Canadian players, but the Montreal Canadiens are called the Canadiens. You could see where my mind ended up going with that sentence. But the Canadians play another game later today. And by the time that game is done, a few hours after this video is going to be uploaded, maybe the stats are going to be all wrong and Wa gets a hat trick or something. If that's the case, then hey, he looks amazing. But I wanted to talk about yet another pick that the Canadians had as of late, their second first round pick in 2022. Let's talk today about Slovakia's Filip Meshar. Now, before we go over this, we have to acknowledge that Slovakia could have been a lot better at this tournament had the Canadians just allowed Yuri Slavkovsky to participate. It's easy to understand why they didn't, because, you know, they kind of want to see him develop on their terms. But Slovakia has been doing pretty well lately. They beat Latvia the other day. They beat the Americans, which was seen as a huge upset. That was the game wherein we saw the Luke Hughes-Lane Hudson discourse going about. But Philip Meshar so far has had himself a pretty intriguing tournament. It took him a little bit of time to get going, as in the first two games for Slovakia, he only had himself one goal, but with a goal and an assist yesterday against Team Latvia, it seems like Philip Meshar is back on track. Even though he has only produced this amount of points, so he's only a point per game in comparison to Joshua and his almost double point per game metric, but Meshar yesterday against Team Latvia had a lot of the skills that we saw out of him put on display once again for the fans in attendance. He's able to open up space in the neutral zone and walk right into the ozone. He's a one-man break-in machine, puts on the brakes, throws it across to the other side of the point where it finds Simon Nemec, who walks right in, shoots, and scores, making it 2 nothing Slovakia. And then he had himself the goal towards the end of the game, empty net goal, outworking his opponent, making it 3 nothing with about three minutes to go for the Slovaks. And it wasn't even just these two points. Philip Meshar had five shots shots, I believe it was, in the game against Latvia, and a few other nice centering passes where he's the guy coming in down the left side, stops up, slows down, opens up a lane in the middle, and then throws it to the guy across going to the net. And he's been doing a really good job at just making the right plays. We always kind of knew that Meshar was a smart enough player that had a lot of mature and poised habits. Even though he's only 18, 19 years old, he's playing like a true pro. It's just a matter of his physical development that is going to determine whether or not he's going to be able to excel at higher levels of play. And then, when everything's said and done, we could have a Slavkovsky and Meshar line together. Two Slovaks right there. Maybe make a trade for Simon Nemec or something and get a third one in there. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitting off the top of the dome here. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Joshua and Philip Meshar, two Canadians forward prospects drafted recently, and how they're doing so far with their teams. As I said, I wanted to make this video the way it is because, unfortunately, for a lot of the other guys, Oliver Kapanen, Adam Enstrom, Vincent Rohrer, unfortunately for a lot of these guys, they're not really the most sought after names like there are a lot more underdog prospects that not too many Canadians fans talk about as much as the first two so I wanted to make this video about the top dogs Philip Meshar, Joshua, of course Slavkovsky would have been there had he gone to the tournament but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about these two as well as if you want to talk about all the other guys then hey feel free to go out there and let me know your opinions on the rest of the Canadians representatives at this year's World Juniors. More games coming later today for Team Canada and does Slovakia play today as well? Yeah they're playing Switzerland. I'm not sure if that game is going to be done by the time this video is uploaded, but if it is, then okay, I mean, just take the numbers from that game and add it onto the stats that we had talked about in this video. Mishar is good enough and poised enough that I'm very believing that he'll have a good game against the Swiss team later today, but either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye.